Hello everybody and welcome to the series. I am continuing my middle school graphic novel series today with five great titles from DC Comics. I'm the comics teacher. The first DC title we are going to get into on this middle school journey is Primer. I talked about Primer a couple of weeks ago on the channel, but I need to talk about it again because it's an amazing DC uh, kids graphics, graphic novel line. Most of these titles have protagonists that are about 13 years old, and Primer deals with a character by the name of Ashley Rayburn who is turning 13 years old. Now. Uh, Primer is done by Jennifer Morrow, Thomas Krajewski, and Gretel, Gretel Lusky, and it follows this girl whose uh, mom is not in the picture, dad is in jail, and she is now living with this foster family. And the foster family are scientists, so the mom for sure is a scientist, and long story short, what happens is she discovers these paints that the mom sneaks out of the lab and brings home. The girl finds them, and what these paints can do, hence the name Primer, is when you put them on, when you spray yourself, you get certain powers. So in the book, there's a cool little key that she writes in her journal when she's trying to figure out what each of the powers are and what each of the paints does. So one will give you power, one will give you visibility, invulnerability, giant giant like you make big one can give you super strength and you can put on three at a time so depending on what you want to do and the trials and tribulations you're going to be facing you can pick the paints you put on well this girl is trying to figure out how she can become a hero with these paints but she's really young and just trying to figure all of this out and not really having a stable home life for most of her life also plays into this fact as well. It's a really cool book, very colorful, very funny. Primer is definitely one of my faves on this list, but all five are pretty cool. So let's go on and talk about the next book. The second DC book for the run today is My Video Game Ate My Homework, and that is by Dustin Hansen. It is a video game middle grade video game lovers dream all right basically this cast of characters in this book there's one character who really needs to get a really good grade on the science project right but they inadvertently these kids inadvertently stumble on this new video game system that is the prize the prize for this competition that this science competition that's going to be going on and the video game system actually kind of like sucks in this kid's science project so this group of friends has to go into this video game and become a part of it in order to get this student's science project back and in the process they learn a lot about each other and their strengths and their weaknesses and how to deal with the things that make them different from each other it is a cool book of friendship that is just steeped in video games all of the from the like the characters things popping up to grabbing a heart to getting extra life all of those video game tropes are in here maybe video game tropes that are more geared towards people my age but it also will lend itself to the middle grade classroom because video games are video games and kids are going to love that i think it's, it's, there's a lot going on on the pages of this book, like the colors and the lines and the art. Sometimes you have to kind of slow down and look away from it for a minute to kind of like pull back to see what's going on because there's just so much happening on the pages of this book. This is a lot of story for the amount of pages. All of these, all of these DC Kids Line graphic novels are they're about the same size here and they're all about 150 pages or so. And bigger panels usually really very colorful. A lot of the art is, is similar, although they, they do vary a little bit, but this one is a cool one. My video game ate my homework. That deserves a spot on your shelf and maybe slide it over to those kids that are just obsessed with video games. The third book is Zatanna and the House of Secrets. You saw I had that in my hand a couple seconds ago when I was talking about the page numbers. This one follows a 13-year-old version of the DC Comics character Zatanna. I believe I'm not really, really familiar with that character. And her mom is gone. We don't know precisely what happened to her mom at the beginning of the, of the graphic novel. Her dad is a magician and she is a 13 year old girl and she quickly realizes that maybe her dad is more than just a simple magician and maybe she has powers that she didn't know she had this does follow a lot of those same 
uh, story patterns as some of the books I've been reviewing the past few weeks, right? We have a missing parent. We have a girl who is discovering powers she didn't know she had. And there's people in her life who knew she had these powers and now she's exploring them. But it is a really neat book. This one um, uh, deals with Zatanna as she is trying to, because her dad kind of disappears, and through the process of trying to find her dad and what happened to her dad and dealing with a couple of the antagonists in the story she also uncovers things about herself and her family and her mom and the house they live in so it is very centralized to the house and the house becomes a big component to the story so i dig it for sure deserves a spot on your middle grade classroom shelf and that book um zatanna and the house of secrets and this house of secrets is done by matthew cody and yoshi yoshitani black Canary Ignite is done by Meg Cabot and Kara McGee, and Black Carry Ignite follows 13-year-old Diana Lance, who we find out pretty quickly is the daughter of Black Canary from the DC Universe. She doesn't know who her mom is or what her mom is capable of, as she quickly, in the story, starts discovering, though, that she has some of the same vocal power superpowers that her mom had um diana lance is once again 13 year old girl navigating the landscape of of middle school and being a teenager with also having a band and, and having friends and quickly realizing that she might need to be more than she is because there's this enemy that is coming after her mom but in turn is also kind of coming after her so she has to quickly learn who she is and defend herself in this landscape of of craziness i liked this book um the art style like i said is very similar to the other ones these these dc uh dc kids books right this is a the graphic novel, DC Kids graphic novels, um, they all, like I said, they're all about 150 pages. They all kind of have the same feel. They're going to look, even the spines, they're going to look the same on your shelf. And I'm going to admit, like, with the exception of a couple things here, some of the stories and art is kind of all blending together in my mind a little bit. Like, I didn't, I read these all this week, and they're all blending together a little bit more than I wanted them to. So I'm going to say that's like the one probably negative thing about a primer. Primer stands out. I would say of the four of these, of the five of these, that the next one's pretty good too. But overall, they do blend together a little bit, but they, they are all safe for your classroom and your students will love them. The fifth and final book for this middle school DC lineup is a book called Antihero. And Antihero is by a bigger team. This is Kate Kyris Quinn, Demetria Lunetta, and Maka Gill. And it follows two girls, Middle, two middle school girls from complete opposite ends of the spectrum in all ways, shapes, and form, Piper and Sloan. And I dug the background of these characters in the beginning of this book because, you know, Sloan comes from a family who the dad's not around, the mom is sick. You find out she comes from this crime family. She's trying to fight out of not being a criminal, but in order to kind of pay her mom's medical bills, she has to kind of she's a thief right she's trained herself kind of to be a thief type character and then piper on the other hand is a girl who has kind of super strength and she is working to become they're in the same class same school she's working to be, kind of become a, a hero where at night she goes and she tries to fight crime and everything well these girls paths quickly cross and i'm like well these are there's some interesting some interesting backstories and then like right at about the quarter mark of the book they freaky friday and they swap bodies and i was like no they're not just gonna do this like freaky friday swap here it's really kind of a generic thing to do but as these i think this story does it really well because these two girls needed to switch into each other's bodies to really realize like who they are and and how they needed to change and how looking at life through the other one's perspective can really open up the door into seeing how life can be different. It's, it's a really good book. This this one uh, probably tied with Primer as my favorite of the week. I just love these characters. The cast of characters in this book is really great. The lessons are strong in this book, sometimes a little bit subtle. The way the girls interact with each other, like even when they don't like each other and then they fall like they love each other as friends, it becomes a wonderful story. So that Antihero is the final book of this DC run. Look, next week, I got a special middle grade treat coming for you. I have a guest, my buddy Michael, teacher is coming on the show and he is well versed in middle grade graphic novels. And I'm gonna do a Zoom call with him and we're gonna talk about, he's gonna offer up five books that I haven't covered yet. And that's gonna be the second to last middle grade book 
in the middle grade video I do, the last one is gonna be sports. So make sure you like and subscribe and make sure that you are keeping up with this playlist that I'm putting all of these middle grade graphic novels videos in. I hope you like the new intro. I'm playing around with all kinds of stuff to see what works. Have a great day.